All right, we are live with Pratik Docker. What is up, Pratik? Thank you for joining us. So for those that don't know Pratik, I would usually say if you're in Israel or in India on LinkedIn, then you definitely know who Pratik is. Um, and if you're not, then you might less likely. So uh, for Israel and India, you don't need an introduction. But let's say for everyone else in the world that might be interested, uh, Pratik Takar is, I uh, would like to say, Israel's tech ambassador to India. He lives here in Israel. And uh, Pratik, welcome to uh, my live. And uh, I'm really happy to have a conversation with you. Thank you so much, Joel. Uh, shalom, namaste. Uh, really happy to be here and uh, discuss my favorite topic with favorite person. Uh, so I'm looking forward to meaningful conversation and discuss Israel-India friendship. Amen. Me too, brother. So first off, maybe a little bit of backstory about you is uh, what is your connection to Israel? Uh, it's really inter interesting question. So I'll go back to my college days where I met my wife, Nancy. Uh, so we were dating for a few years and then I knew that uh, she's Jewish. I didn't knew that Jewish religion existed that time. Uh, how old are uh, you? Judaism. Sorry? How, how, how old were you at that point? I was 16. Uh, and I didn't know like about Israel or anything. Then I came to know about Israel. I learned more about what is Judaism and Jewish culture. And we got married when I was 21. Uh, and my wife was working in Elal Airlines that time. And she used to travel a lot to Israel for her work. So she, like, you know, inspired me to come here uh, because of my passion with uh, technology, startups, uh, entrepreneurship. And we thought that we would build our careers here. And uh, by day today, I feel so happy and proud that I'm here and I made the right decision to move to Israel. When did you move here? Uh, I moved here almost about eight years ago or in 2013. Mm -hmm. 2013 or 14, I, I, I forgot. So tell me about your, your background in technology. So you've always had a passion for technology, even before you even heard the word Jew. Um, and uh, so how did that come about? Did you grow up in a house that was very involved in technology? Well, was it your are, community and your culture? Yes. So there are two, two things that you need to know. Okay. So I'm coming from a community that is called Guju. Okay. Guju. Guju are Gujarati from India. Okay. People who are Gujarati are usually businessmen in India. And my family was like, you know, my father is a businessman. My uncle is a businessman. Most of like my family or relatives are businessmen. So when uh, in India, they, you are a Gujarati, that means you are a businessman. So I had this entrepreneurship from like, you know, since I was eight, something selling firecrackers or pickles uh, on the street. Like I used to take my bicycle and like, you know, went and sold uh, pickles. Uh, and when it comes to Jewish, uh, Jews also are known for entrepreneurship, right? Uh, so my passion for entrepreneurship or technology started when uh, my father purchased me a computer. It was my first computer. I was in like eighth, eighth grade. And uh, I, I was seeing that people are making money online. I was seeing that old school landing pages that we used to see. Uh, like With the yeah, view yeah. count on the bottom, how many people visited it's, the page? Exactly. With a, the and keyword so, SEO stuffing, they're like, you know, yeah. you stuff the words in white on white so you couldn't see it. It was really like, you know, like start of the era of like internet in 2005 something or maybe slightly before. And I was like very curious how these things work. And YouTube was like, you know, starting out and Facebook came in 2008, something it became popular in, in, in India before we were using Orkut while I was in college. So everything was like, you know, going digital that made me curious, you know, I want to be in like, you know, digital space, because I saw that this is the future. So I started to learn more about it. Uh, like in terms of college, uh, I did marketing because uh, I, f I felt that sales and marketing is like, you know, subject that you need to know for the rest of your life and you have to be a good salesperson no matter what you do. So marketing came through my father's inspiration and technology came through my personal passion amazing uh awesome and so then you got connected with israel through your your wife who's working at law says wait you like tech and you don't know about israel and you're like no what's israel right so 
What was no, your it, first time you came and visited? I was, I, was, I was very young. Like, you know, in India, there are still a lot of people who don't know about Israel. But recently, mm-hmm. because of, uh, like, you know, India-Israel friendship with uh, Narendra Modi's visit, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Israel, and after Prime Minister B. B. Netanyahu visited India, so this friendship uh, took uh, to the new level, and we are seeing greater heights in friendship. And that's how now Israel is known amongst the people who weren't aware about Israel before. So if you if you go back five years, there were still a lot of, like I would say 70, 65% of people don't know about Israel. And there will be still few 30% of people who won't know about Israel yet. Uh, so I was in like one of them uh, when I, while I was dating my wife. So... Uh, as soon as, like, you know, I discovered uh, what are the possibilities, you know, I was immediately sold uh, by the idea of uh, being a startup nation, uh, new Silicon Valley, uh, Silicon Valley, I would say, right? Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty exciting, uh, and I'm fortunate to be in Israel. By the way, that's why we, I named my company Wadi Digital was because of the exactly. term Silicon Wadi. And you know what's actually interesting is that I learned that everyone in Israel doesn't know that ter- Israelis don't know that term, but everyone that loves tech outside of Israel and like America and India and the rest of the world knows the term Silicon Wadi. It actually has a very detailed um, Wikipedia entry also, but Israelis yeah. had no idea. I didn't know that when I moved here. Uh, I also moved here. I moved here eight years ago. Um, very very cool i yeah. guess we move together yeah right there you go i i, I went from uh, east to west and you went from west to east exactly we, we met li- in the middle literally the center of the world geographically and many other ways it's the center of the world uh, it's hard so you world. right so what actually brought so what really actually brought you here would you say is your wife is would that be correct uh yeah she was the biggest inspiration uh she she believed uh, like she visited Israel many times and uh, for her this is a special place uh, for every Jew it's a special place to be visiting the country living here uh, so she always wanted that uh, we build our careers here we build our life here we raise our children here uh, so and uh, I I'm like you know as soon as like she she discussed this idea of moving here. Without even thinking or coming for a visit, uh, I directly made Aliyah. Uh, so it was like a big risk uh, without knowing where I'm uh, putting my toes in. But uh, everything turned out amazingly well. Awesome. Um, and so the first time you came, was that with your wife? Like, what, did, what were your first thoughts when you came to Israel? You came in to visit first, I, I assume. Is that correct? No, I didn't. Uh, I So we got married. And after one year, we... We went to Jewish agency and we applied for Aliyah and we directly met Aliyah. So it was my so first, the first time, time you visited was Aliyah. Yeah. Yeah. My first time. Uh, my wife, although came multiple times before, so I trusted her uh, choice. Is she watching? But, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think she's watching. What's up, wife? Uh, <laughs> very cool. Very nice. And uh, and so you came here. What was your so what was your first interaction with tech? Because your wife worked for El Al, so, right? So there wasn't tech involved. How did you get into the tech scene? I mean, you come here in a, in a sense you're an outsider, right? In a way, because right? I mean, there there are very few Indians, particularly in tech, in Israel. Um, so how, how did yeah. how did you maneuver your way into the technology industry? And how did you grow your following? I'd also like to know. So when I started the. Uh... The first day in Israel was the hardest day of my life, first of all. Uh, again, like, you know, uh, leaving your friends, family, uh, your home, uh, it, it, it really pulls you down, right? And the emotional part of you wants to go back. And I was in two minds for not just one day, for like years. Uh, but like, you know, I, uh, the challenge or being like, you know, uh, not giving up attitude uh what made me like survive in israel the one thing that helped me was the people of israel uh, like from day one you know when we moved here super helpful like you know when we make aliyah or when we move to israel people are so helpful and they want to they want to actually genuinely 
show you the right direction how you can be like you know successful in a country where almost everyone is immigrant so having that uh, warm from people was the number one thing that i loved the second part of being like successful in the career uh, was my you know lessons i learned from my father uh, and what i did basically like you know until i got my first job i i took like a job in uh, in airbnb kind of hotel in uh, jerusalem and i was doing cleaning uh until i until then i was doing freelancing i i posted uh, on secret jerusalem which is a facebook group that i'm willing to do a free website uh so i did like couple of free website and from that uh, project uh i got my first job in voice of israel as a reference uh so that worked out like you know something you give for free up front uh, add value to someone's life and automatically i landed up in like you know really amazing place that i worked for almost a year and then i moved to massa where like you know i learned more about zionism uh, what is uh, i attended massa so you attended massa i brought hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people in my 3 years of career in at massa to israel on uh, study abroad internship uh, or uh, MITF programs uh, so that they can come and experience what we are experiencing right now so that 3 years were like you know one of the best times of my career it was not just work it was fun and also like you know learning experience about the country about the religion about uh, what is to be like you know being zionist uh, so maybe i can say probably that i'm more jewish than my my wife now <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what the follow up question to that is right <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> did they get circumcised <laughs> <laughs> no, you walked into maybe, that one yeah maybe we can we can discuss this offline <laughs> <laughs> better, better that we don't get the live band um very interesting so you know there's something about that about providing value and what i find this actually very unique to israel is that people are always want the help and it's something about being like the jewish country and like you're saying everyone's an immigrant right in in a sense so so many people are ignorant if you're if you're an immigrant or your parents an immigrant basically that is the story of israel for about like 80% of the population by large in that and um so i mean there's always like trying to help each other and that's a kind of big aspect and what you did you brought that and the goodwill of trying to help people with just starting off with some websites doing it for free and you've been able to do that and be able to network and connect your way in order to help more people but many people have been able to do that uh many people to their credit have done that but very few people have built kind of um uh, found kind of a voice of their passion using your passion about let's say in your case tech israel and india and you've brought it all together and you've kind of built a a network and a following around that um how did you get from helping other people to finding opportunities to loving tech to expanding your network and meeting people in Israel to actually now leveraging that voice um for let um for Indians so you know being being successful in like you know place where people are like everyone is basically genius is challenging and uh, you know i i realized <laughs> that's such a great quote <laughs> Being successful where with the genius is challenging. Yeah. So, like yeah, you're you're like you know uh surrounded by like brilliant uh, talents and uh, you know you grow when you are around amazing people. That is one thing and it's not something that uh, you are amazing at something else and I'm amazing at something else. Uh but uh the the most important aspect that helped me succeed in israel or in my career was uh decisions that i took uh in regards to like you know the trends uh, in the market for example previously people were building brands for the company and i realized having a personal brand is like number one priority and i started like you know inspired by nas daily if you are aware about nas daily mm-hmm. so i saw him being very successful with this consistency so uh learning from uh, from his experience of like if he can do it in 1000 days uh of being consistently creating videos every day which is crazy 
uh, so I, I took a challenge like almost 650 days ago. I said uh, I will post every day on LinkedIn for 1,000 days without missing any single day, no matter what it takes. Uh, and that that alone, like, you know, changed my mindset in being more disciplined because I announced to the world already. Uh, and as soon as you announce, you make people accountable and automatically people are expecting. So people That's can the hardest trust. part. That's the hardest part, yes. For, for but, me, it's the announcement. By the way, more than the, because once you make the announcement, the rest is like, well, I have to show up, right? I've made the announcement. Exactly. You know what I mean? But it, it, the announcement, so yeah, go ahead, continue. It's, it's very hard to go back, you know? It's almost impossible to go back when, like, uh, when I started, I had almost 2,000, uh, 2,000 or almost uh, 1,800 people connected on LinkedIn. So, and uh, that first post, like, you know, got engagement and people supported me and all of a sudden if i don't post one day i'll like you know won't meet my word uh but if you are if you are passionate of doing something you know automatically you will you will succeed but the important part of consistency is not just posting every day but what i how i found my voice which is important to know uh, for almost 100 days, I was posting about marketing. If you are like, you know, if you were, if we were connected initially, I'm sure I, we were connected initially. I was posting a lot about uh, marketing. And then I realized, like, it's not me. Although I'm a marketer, but, you know, I have my own story. I have my own authenticity that I can share to the world. Me being an Indian living in Israel, uh, I have a unique voice that no one else has. So that's my uniqueness. What's my passion? I love startups. I love technology. I love marketing. Uh, so I'll use my marketing to promote what I love. Uh, so that's how I found my voice. But, you know, I found my voice basically when there was like some war going on between Israel and uh, our neighbors. Hamas. Uh, uh, neighbors. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, so I posted something about Israel and people who were following me actually could relate to the struggles uh, India had uh, with his uh, its neighbors, right? Automatically, like, I believe that f f what if I share the reality? I'm living in Israel and what's happening here is something that I can see, experience and share. And people who are following you, <laughs> Omri is liking our neighbors a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, I think... By the way, that... since you got thrown off, uh, if anyone wants to add any comments or questions, we will address them later on or as they're relevant or we'll, do, we'll address them at the end. So if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and pop them over in LinkedIn in the chat um, and we'll address them. Uh so how I found my voice was uh, out of a uh, lot of uh, consistent efforts that I put every day. And I, I saw that, like, you know, a lot of my content were, were, was not getting, like, you know, enough engagement that I was expecting. So I decided to switch my niche and go and talk about more related to Israel, Israeli technology, Israeli innovation. And why, like, you know, people in India should uh, follow Israeli tech uh, scene. And that's when I found my voice. Uh, and automatically people could relate to it. And I almost doubled my following in like almost 40 days. Uh, I reached 50K and now I'm about to reach 100K in like, uh, again, 40 days, like double, that's double. Awesome. Yeah. But it's again, like, you know, Almost 170, 80 days it took me to find the voice I needed. Uh, and after I found my voice, it was like, you know, very easy. But still, it's not easy. Again, well, what, uh, what, what, what do you think people see your authenticity when it's like your voice? Like, it's thing like you really know well. Like, I really know marketing well, so I can talk about it a lot. I love marketing and I love the attention and all that media. I love it. But like... Um, my real voice is kind of like uh, like uh, more like uh, economic liberty and you know indiv individual responsibility and things like that. So kind of when I talk more about that, I feel like it's my voice. I get more passionate, and I find that my following to be more 
to be deeper, not necessarily wider, but definitely more intimate with, with my audience. And um, how would you recommend for people that want to, let's say, find their voice? You might be an expert in something and think you know something better than anyone else, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's your voice. How does one find their voice if it's possible? It's easy. Uh, follow what people have to say. So that's not your voice. No, I'll tell you. It's my voice, but you know, when I I share a lot of things, right? Like we share a lot of posts every day, or every other day. Uh, but when we share something which is relatable, okay, when you can relate with a lot of people, that's when you create a lot of following. So I found my voice because I have a lot of interest, right? I have interest in marketing. Doesn't mean that I can be like, you know, a voice in just marketing. I can use that marketing knowledge to be the voice in the passion I have, which is technology. But now technology or innovation or startups or entrepreneurship is like, uh, can be broad. But uh, the audience also is broad. Uh, well, as when you're talking about marketing, your audience is like, you know, small. Uh, a lot of people on LinkedIn are looking for jobs, look, uh, looking for, firstly, like, you know, when they come to LinkedIn, they want to get hired or want to network with people. And there is small percentage, I would say less than 3% or 2% are content creators. So I, I try to find the voice that I needed to get that following I wanted about my passion. Um and again, like, you know, it's trial and error. You post something today and you see what's the engagement on this topic. If you're not getting something out of that topic, like after four or five posts, you know that it's not working for you. And you try to change your voice or change your the way you say or change the topic you're discussing. And automatically, mm -hmm. you know, you see what's working and what's not after like 20, 30 posts. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. Like, you know, it was not working for me. Marketing was not working. Uh, so I switched to kind of inspirational post. Uh, it wasn't working. I switched to startups and it's working. Awesome. I'm happy to hear that. Right. So you kept testing it and you found out you, you tried different things that you were passionate about and you found out. Um, so what do you think here? Actually, here's a good question that's kind of relevant. So I'll ask it now. Uh, Disha, she wants to know uh, during the ups and downs in life, how do you keep moving and what keeps you going? <laughs> A lot of things going on, like, you know, when you are uh, getting famous or people know you, uh, you have a lot of following. There are there are times when you see a lot of negative comments uh, on your post and uh, you have a lot of things going on in your business world, which is like, you know, kind of roller coaster. Your mood swings because something is not happening the way you wanted. Uh, and it's pretty upsetting. What I do is uh, I go, I, I take a break every evening at from seven to nine. I go on a walk with my wife and that's where like I share my feelings with her and she shares her feelings with me. That helps us keep going for the next day. Uh, you know, when you talk your heart out with other person you love or care, automatically it releases the stress and tension you have. And that helped me. I'm sure, like, you know, I think it's the right, right uh, thing to do if you're married or if you have a partner or you can share with your parents. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a good point. Or if you have a dog, but I don't yes. know if that helps. Uh, I see some AI tech uh, blockchain questions. We're going to get to the technology questions. So you can keep them coming and we'll circle back to them. Um, so Israel and India, what do you, um, other than our lovely neighbors, as you as you said, what do we share in common, would you say, that kind of brought, because if I were to think 10 years ago, Israel and India, there's like, it's it, I'd feel the same about like Israel, you know, and Chile, you know what I mean? I, I don't mean the food, I meant the country, uh, maybe the food, I don't know, but um, I, it's just like, it's like so far, so distant, kind of irrelevant, and you can find similarities if you want, a long coast, and now, you know what I mean? But like... What do you um, what do you think? Like, what are the main similarities, both uh, most let's say start uh, culturally and, or in general between India and Israel as nations, and let's say culturally down to the individual. Let's say what the day to day of an Israeli. How does how is that similar to the day to day of an Indian? So uh, India and Israel share a lot of similarities uh, from religion, from culture, from uh, like history. 
uh, like ancient history or like, you know, we are like one of the oldest religions uh, uh, there is. Uh, like, you know, Judaism is like almost 5,000 years old. And uh, so is uh, India. Uh, India and Israel both are multicultural. Like, you know, and also like, especially in Israel, as I mentioned, most of them are immigrants or their fa parents are immigrants. They have an ethnic group uh, 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 and have like an ancient holy places for every legion in the country, you know, which is like unique. Mm. Not every other country has that. Uh, both uh, countries got independence, like you know, almost same same time. India right, well, were both occupied by the British. Nineteen forty-eight. Uh, well, as when you talk about religion, uh, Hindus uh, in India almost eighty percent, and same goes with Jew Jewish people in Israel. Uh, but it's, uh, I think it's more about like people uh, and, you know, always uh, both countries trying to make the world better, pay, better and peaceful place. That's the common thing we, we share. And that's why we are like, you know, partners in, uh, uh, in a lot of places, a uh, uh, lot of uh, places, which is, uh, for example, technology or the security or uh, water management or agriculture, we share like, you know, support from each other. Awesome. That's very fascinating. Yeah, there is that. And, and I think uh, when you said kind of like uh, when Moody invited uh, Netanyahu over and no one knew about Israel, it went from like 30% to 60, 70% of people and finally out oh, with Israel. Um, I think that there's something there, but because we kind of share a lot of these things culturally and similar kind of challenges and growth challenges and technology, that there's a natural partnership and alliance thing between Israel and India on the government level. And I think that's actually been able, and I think to India, Moody's credit, been able to bring that over to India to help elevate Israel. And through that, Israel, um, um, a country that would like to have more friends than she currently has, um, elevated that that friendship and therefore not, that friendship is very mutual. And I think we're going to start to see that. And that's definitely going to explode and grow. I think the word India will be used in conversation daily in Israel by almost everyone in business and government, which is not now, but let's say maybe it's weekly, but I think it will just be a regular part of conversation, just like um, talking about mentioning America. I feel like that's where we're going to be in a few years with regard to India. That's my true belief. Uh, I just think it's just, it's just such I think, natural uh, values and challenges kind of similar to America. I think trade between both of the countries have extended beyond like, you know, agriculture and now technology. And the the interesting part is I think that India has edge over China in being more stable democracy. And on top of it, there is a large number of people in India speak English and are technically qualified, which attracts a lot of Israeli tech companies to do business in India. Uh, mm. So like, you know, uh, I think being an Indian, working in Israeli startup and tech scene, uh, I think uh, it's a great opportunity for me being promoting Israeli tech products in India and like, you know, strengthening this partnership in, in technology moving forward is I think uh, is where like the future is for this relationship. Yeah. And what do you think? Yeah, I, I totally see that. And between... Um... Uh, the Indian, the Indian people, and the Israeli people, I feel that like there's not enough um, like cross cultural, and I think maybe it's because maybe I think a lot of the culture that's created, uh, in, let's say in America, for example, is all in English, and so people in India and Israel, where let's say they speak English fluently and proficient, they're able to consume, let's say, American entertainment. On the other hand, Indians and Israelis aren't consuming Israeli entertainment. Therefore, I, unfortunately, it's not going to be through the cultural, but I think it'll be more through businesses like you and I do, and maybe through government, that's going to actually create the cultural connection, and hopefully it will kind of trickle down and then build off organically. That's my opinion and thoughts. What do you think? I, I agree with you, and also, like, you know, in terms of uh, tourism, also, there is one thing that I would like to add. Uh, uh, as you know, like Israelis love uh, to spend their times in India for almost three months, six months, maybe a year. There are people after IDF, they go to India. And uh, there is like, you know, uh, before, you know, when Indians want to travel outside, outside India, they usually go to travel agencies and there is like a package for Europe and like... Uh, 
Thailand or USA, but now they started like, you know, Israel, which is cool. uh, unusual. So like tourism on both ways is also like, you know, helping us connect culturally and in many ways. So if you were to tell an Indian that wanted to come to Israel, what would you recommend that they do? Uh, must sees, let's say from, um, in general, if someone's coming once and they probably are only going to come for one main trip, maybe they'll come back again for business or years later. But it, what would you recommend? What are the things that they should definitely do uh, that you think Indians in particular would find interesting? And also I'd like to know what do generally Israelis or other people think is interesting about seeing in Israel and you think uniquely the Indian culture would find boring? So let's start with... Uh, or overrated uh, rather. Uh, what what Indians can uh, experience here in Israel, starting mm -hmm. with uh, amazing beaches we have in Israel, almost 130 plus, and all of them really amazingly beautiful, uh, starting with Tel Aviv Beach, which I uh, absolutely love. So we don't have amazing beaches that we that Israel has in India. So this is something to to see. And the second, which I think uh, most important one is Jerusalem, which is like, you know, uh, place uh, for, for a lot of uh, cultures, religions, uh, ancient city, uh, amazing vibes. I lived there for almost two and a half years. It's magical if you spend like three, four days in the old city of Jerusalem. It is. Ma I lived in the old city of Jerusalem in Yeshiva for three months, and it is amazing. Yeah. When absolutely. you wake up there and you're everything and like, oh, another world leader is going to like walk by where you live. It's like you're the center of the earth. It is amazing. It is an un unusual experience. And I would say magically, magical Dead Sea, uh, which is where you can float, uh, uh, is something to experience lowest point on the earth. Uh, breathtaking Mount Hermon. If you are in here in winter around like January, mm -hmm. February, you can go and uh, play in snow. Uh, also, I love Elat, which uh, is in the desert, but uh, um, again, really uh, amazing city with a lot of tourists. Uh, so I think Israel is like really small country, but it's outstanding because of... Uh, because of a lot of places, a lot of things uh, Israel can offer being such a small country. You can even like drive by your car like six hours from north to south. Uh, you can experience uh, amazing mountains with green and like deserts in the south. So, yeah, it's really it's really phenomenal. Also, I mean, the Jerusalem yeah. climate is different from Samaria and Judea and the Golan, the Galil and the desert. And even the desert itself has this diversity, given just how small it is. So it is actually absolutely fascinating. And it, I, I, I tell my American friend, it's like everything you have in America, but everything's like within a short drive. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, you don't have to fly to Arizona or fly to, or fly to the beach. Or, this is, this is know, absolutely is not as good skiing. Now, right. if you want to experience Europe, uh, Christmas vibes of Europe, you can just go to Kaifa now and you mm -hmm. will experience Nazareth and Bethlehem and Jerusalem also has got some things going yeah. also. And so what do you think, is there, and what about, let's say, Israelis going to India? What, so other than, I mean, Israelis go to India a lot, right? And the Indians probably don't notice them because even though it's a huge proportion of Israelis go there, as you said, for an extended period of time, particularly after the army service, um, mm -hmm. there's so few of us in net numbers, they're probably not even noticed other than those working in those tourist air spots. Mm -hmm. um, what would you recommend for, if, if let's say, an Israeli like me, you know, married, I have a couple of kids. I'm not looking to go backpacking for several months or anything. Uh, let's say I plan on going there with my family for a week. What do you recommend me doing as a family man? I think, uh, firstly, you have to uh, book a tour and not like go. Israelis don't have. Go on like... your, don't go on your own. Yeah, because uh, you don't know the language, right? On the streets, uh, there are a percentage of people who don't speak English like you do, right? Uh, and when you're with uh, a tour guide or a company which is taking you, uh, you are like, you know, uh, on a guided tour, it's much better experience because uh, they know where to go and what to do and how to do. Uh, so it's better if you're going with family to be organized. Mm -hmm. um, the, the places you can experience uh, one of the wonders of the world, which is Taj Mahal. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, the fun part is I haven't been to Taj Mahal yet. 
Uh, so That's how big I India also, is, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's. So I I'm from Mumbai, and Taj Mahal is in the north in Delhi, so it's far, like almost, uh, let's say, two thousand kilometers. Oh, okay. So it's a way. Um, then you can go to Jaipur, which is a really beautiful city, Udaipur, Jaipur, uh, which is again in the desert of Rajasthan. Um, then you have Kerala, uh, which is like really beautiful destination for families. Uh, and there is a lot of hill station in Kerala, amazing vibes, amazing food. Um, I won't recommend you to go to Mumbai or, uh, or Delhi specifically because it's too crowded. And it's not for people who come from uh, the West because they're not used to like such population. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think uh, these are like, you know, one week is uh, something that uh, will, but one week is very less for you. Uh, like, you know, if you want to go to India, you need to, you need like 15 to 15, 20 days to see like a few destinations because a lot of time will go in traveling or catching flights. Pratik, when are what, when are we gonna organize an Israeli Indian kind of like maybe like a tech ambassadorship where we do like one week in Israel then one week in India with like a group of like twenty tech leaders in Israel, twenty tech leaders in India? Do well, you think we can organize that? Uh, I was about to organize that last year, uh, but okay, uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, but because of COVID, uh, partners from India who proposed this tour. Um, we, we postponed it because of the COVID. Uh, I, I think we will do something by end of 2022. Uh, but hopefully, like, you know, coming soon, if the things are normal uh, and travel is back to normal. So, yes. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, yeah, uh, let me know if you need help with that. Uh, yes. Anything else? We'll move over to technology in a moment. Uh, Omri demands us ask his questions. So let's get to it. Uh, Pratik, where do you think LinkedIn influencer marketing is heading? Uh, it's now like, you know, I was, I, I built a following that I needed, right? Now I was thinking how I can monetize it. So I started a program uh, for, for startups and technology companies that I believe and I trust that uh, the product is amazing. I, I know the team. Uh, so I offered companies to be their brand ambassador. Uh, what I will do is like, you know, have a subscription model for, for that companies. Uh, and I will put that company in my, my LinkedIn profile or being their brand ambassador. So I think, uh, I think that's where I'm seeing go, it's going and I want to start this trend. Um, so being a so brand that, ambassador for other companies. Or let's say, for example, uh, you are, but don't you need a following already to do that? Like who's going to, let's say, pursue, let's say, you know, I want to, you know, um, you need a following to do that though, right? Absolutely. Uh, but I'm talking about like, you know, as an influencer myself. In general, right, right. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, on how I am connecting with companies, like, you know, also companies can do vice versa. Companies can reach out to the influencers and like, you know, not just, uh, Usually, like, you know, when people were reaching out to me about posting one post uh, and promotional post, and I rejected many of them because it was not something that I speak. Uh, I want to talk about technology or startups or marketing or like, you know, some, some, somewhere in what my niche is, but uh, not something that I don't uh, talk about and my audience won't be interested in. So I'm reaching out to companies now on specific uh, niche I am targeting. And that way it can help them and it will help me as well. Uh, And companies can do the same. For example, they can go to Yoel, for example, being their brand ambassador for some marketing product they have. For example, Mm -hmm. for example, SEMrush or Hotjar can go to Yoel or Mm -hmm. can come to me. And we can promote uh, their product to our following. And in that way, we'll have a long-term uh, revenue as an influencer, well as it will benefit the other company. Natural capitalism at its best. All right, we got a very sweet but long comment. I can't show that. It's going to hide our face. I'll read it. Uh, Pradeep said, I've come across a couple of Israeli nationals. He means back home in India. Um, I've met them and I have 
I have, they've lived in my house in my village. It was amazing wow. getting to know them and was stunned to see similar physical traits of some of my family relatives. That's actually interesting. Uh, Chit Pavan, you want to say, what, what's that? That's what we're called in our community. We have similar physical traits, IQ, eye color, skin tone, et cetera. So, I, I, you and I, are, are, our, our skin tone isn't far off either, but I'm half European, half Yemenite. So it's kind of funny like that. Um, there's some questions here about AI and blockchain tech. So I want to scroll up and find them. Uh, there's a bunch here. What does this one want? Uh, is there anything, uh, uh, Vedang, am I saying that right? Yeah, Vedang Singh. Um, uh, so uh, by the way, as someone who grew up in America, Indian names are the most fun to say. Uh, <laughs> are, are there any interesting blockchain technologies related startups in Israel that you think are amazing that should be talked more about? Uh, not on top of my head right now because I'm not uh, yet uh, like, you know, deep dive into blockchain technology, uh, mostly focus on cloud tech or IoT space or cybersecurity or uh, uh, fintech or education tech. Uh, but like, you know, I'm sure like once I have some cool startup from Israel doing amazing things in that niche, I will definitely share it on LinkedIn. So uh, just a couple of things to add, there's a lot of cybersecurity companies that are doing some things around blockchain technology because it's, it's far more secure than other things that are out there. So when your, your question should be a little bit more focused, especially for Israel, which I think 40% of all cybersecurity activity happens within Israel. So you focus more on the cybersecurity angle. Um, I have a friend who's more, if you're more into crypto blockchain, really, there's a Jonathan Karras. He's also an immigrant from America. He lives in Jerusalem outside of Jerusalem, and he talks a lot about crypto, and I think he actually has a VC fund that's making investments in Israel around crypto and maybe even uh, also some uh, block uh, and blockchain. Um, Aperva says, I have done a master's in AI. Israel is one of the leading countries for AI in the domain of agriculture and defense. So is there any mentoring program or internship for AI in Israel for Indian students? It's a great question. There, there is a lot of opportunities for you to come and learn in, in, in Israel. I have, like, you know, I do, um, I do meet up with, uh, peop, uh, with a lot of students from Tel Aviv University. Uh, and while I was working in Massa uh, three, four years ago, uh, a lot of students from India came for an internship programs. And also there are a few students who were doing master's. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'll I'll guide you in the right direction. I'll send you a few links that you can go and check out their their courses and see if you can uh, uh, you can find what you're looking for. Also, uh, Bar Ilan University also has a very good international MBA program. But mm -hmm. what what I would recommend to you is come for like an international learning program. But that's like nothing. And while you're here. Network, volunteer, do what Pratik did when he when he made Aliyah, right? Come, I'll do things for free. Let me learn. Let me network. Organize networking events. That's the value is, you know, come and learn. Don't just come and learn, but you actually want to be part of the ecosystem and provide that value like Pratik has done. And I think you'll be able to get the most you want out of it. So um, more, like, you know, there, was, there was a big challenge that I want to discuss uh, for two minutes. Like a lot of Indian students who came to learn here, uh, they had like, you know, a hard time getting jobs here because of uh, visa issues or like, you know, uh, but now Israeli government has opened doors for students who are like, you know, coming and learning here and the opportunities are much more easier than before. So I think it's a right time if you are looking for study abroad programs, uh, Israel is the best destination for you to come and learn and also settle. Mm -hmm. All, also, by the way, you could take this network back to India and probably yes. have a much better quality of life there. It would be harder mm -hmm. for you to immigrate. Um, and, um, and use your network in order to kind of build that business, in this, you know, build that network here, go back to India and continue to serve people that you networked with. I think doing that for a year, because especially if you're doing any kind of, um, engineering, IT, um, outsourcing, particularly, maybe, you know, a thing or two about this, um, outsourcing is extremely needed. We have a huge shortage here and Israel rightfully has very stri strict, uh, immigration. Um, so, so we far more so demand, we, and I think I want, outsourcing I is a big part of that. I want to discuss a bit 
about the future of like you know work uh, again this is one of the topics that i'm going to discuss on 19th of december on my ted talk uh, which is coming up so people who are listening stay tuned uh, now when like you know i saw this opportunity in like you know outsourcing 3 4 years ago before even covid came in and i was helping companies hire talent in india for sales development for customer support is like you know really popular niche because there are a lot of bpos or call centers in india already like not now it's been like over 10 15 or 2 3 decades maybe and now like you know this outsourcing model is global and you don't have to be physically available in israel or in us or anywhere else you can be in india and earn the same amount of money that i'm earning sitting in israel uh, so uh, the the possibilities are limitless uh, in the future of work because all you need is like an internet and uh, your laptop Uh, so if i travel to india now i can do my business the way i'm doing right now because all of the things we are doing is virtual uh, so as uh, you all said you can come and have the experience that you were looking for and you can go back and like you know work for israeli company in india and a lot of a lot of israeli companies are hiring talents in from india Yeah and and for Israelis by the way uh those with the huge shortage in the prices of engineers and IT has just soared um and so I do think outsourcing is an excellent opportunity not just for you as companies I mean good for culture it's good for learning it's more pro- pro- more profitable because the expenses the employment costs are are probably significantly lower um and then you don't have to go crazy trying to find people here in Israel even though that would be ideal but there's an uh there's like shortage of like 40,000 workers or something <laughs> in like IT and tech and that might not sound a lot for a country with India that has you know you know that 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 rounds their population to the tens of millions or hundreds of millions <laughs> but that's that an insane amount for Israel's people? population what 1.3 billion people yes yeah, so yeah like you're rounding to the 100 million <laughs> so like 40,000 is like 40,000 you know <laughs> 40,000 people are born every hour in India literally right you know so it's just uh but it's it's all it's a big deal because we've like uh, 9 million people um there were oh man the more comments are coming in so it went away there was so another blockchain question this time from did i ask the dang's question yeah uh, I mean, think, be, yeah wait there's there's there some more Um all right let's just say I, I lost it here yeah pretty what does it take to get into blockchain technology related marketing roles and are there any blockchain related programs and marketing professionals in Israel I think we already discussed this I wouldn't know about professionals but go to LinkedIn and just search that people are interested in blockchain a lot like you know I think uh, I have to focus my direction. and AI we're seeing I'm seeing some AI comments as well here But, but by the way I'd like to say you make a comment so I have this theory which I would say is a fa- is true um but what I've learned is like cybersecurity has been so huge in Israel and a lot of it in my opinion and I would like to hear your opinion obviously um is that it's come actually obviously out of the IDF is that cybersecurity is needed for defense and now you're seeing the same thing for kind of for defense and patterns is AI and then is being a data processing right so you're seeing a lot of big data and I think we're also going to see a lot of future in space and defense because whoever controls the space controls was going on on earth um so i think you'll see i think that's why we're getting a big i wouldn't say a shift but a greater focus to ai and to blockchain and you'll see more about data processing which is probably the most boring of them all and then and then i think you'll be seeing some more more stealthily a lot more um technology around space and defense this is where i think the technology is going where do you think it's going you know and what niches or anything so ai robotics is like you know number like i would say number one uh, on the list and uh, again blockchain crypto you think more than cyber security yes cyber security probably also yes is. probably but in israel yeah it it cyber security complements all of the niches out there like you know uh, but again uh, when i say uh, ai and robotics if you see like you know it's not going to be used just for future of work but also like it will replace a lot of jobs it will not just replace like the way you know computers were introduced and we were like you know uh, we thought that it would be a threat uh, to a lot of jobs and now we are using uh, there were a lot of niche uh, uh, jobs which were created because of computers 
Correct. So the, the AI and robotics uh, or other technology which will come in the future, which also, uh, I think it's for good. And uh, uh, one more thing I wanted to discuss. One second, I'm just looking. I had a key pointer, which was amazing. Uh, one second. I can't find it for now. Maybe I'll share it afterwards. Okay, cool. Uh, so then I'll bring this up, which is relevant. And that is the, oh wait, sorry. We already asked about AI. Okay, uh, question is visible. What are some of the blocks? Okay, I already asked some of that questions. Okay, cool. So I, I wanna know a little bit more about kind of, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 so I, I, if you can elaborate more, if you had more to say on the matter or did you pull up what you wanted to find? Uh, not yet. I'm trying, but I'm maybe I lost that document. All right, no worries. If you if you pulled up, we'll, uh, let us know. But in the meantime, what are the main technologies in India? Um, most people think of India as an opportunity to outsource. There's a, a lot, a lot of people and a lot of competition for employment and decent employment in India. Um, and there's so many of them. I think that drives the prices down. And since there's the English, um, a lot of customer support and things like that have been outsourced. What are other people and some ITs being outsourced to? Um, what technologies are, is India best known for? What do you think is probably the most undervalued or underknown technology, maybe not known, but should known? Um, well, what do so, you think? I, I would share like, you know, a lot of aspects that, you know, uh, in terms of outsourcing that people are not aware about Indian talent. Uh, I think most of the talents which we have from IIT or like, you know, big universities in India, they, they move abroad because uh, they, they automatically uh, are hired after they go abroad for st study abroad programs. But when there are other talents which are left in India, uh, which uh, for many reasons that they don't go. Uh, for example, IT, IT is like number one uh, thing. In, under IT, uh, I would say uh, there are a lot of uh, web developers I think almost four or 500,000 good web developers out there in India. Yeah. It's a crazy India. number. Yeah. yeah. Um, How many websites are there? You start to wonder. Like, yeah. You know, it's such a crazy number. So web development or app development was like, you know, getting very popular in the last 10 years. And people have changed their mindset of getting a degree after their high school and they are focusing more on like learning the skills which are required for succeeding in real life and i 100 percent support that i am anti higher education even though i have an mba and everything i find it to be a huge waste of money and time uh, i think uh, that's where uh, the the indian education system or the mindset is going at least in my my knowledge uh, Second best, I would say, like, you know, a lot of people are, like, you know, educated. They have good English. So what can be outsourced is, like, you know, virtual assistant jobs, for example, any kind of tech-savvy job or uh, companies need a lot of virtual assistant for operation works that can be outsourced. Uh, the lot of uh, companies that I'm working with are doing customer support. So live chat is popular. Email support is popular. And now we are going into like, you know, app market where there are a lot of app and subscription models and people need support. So we are going to help, we are, we are helping them as well. Uh, what else? Uh, sales development. Uh, there is a lot of uh, demand for sales development. A lot of businesses, be, at least in B2B, uh, struggle to find good sales development, uh, which is something that, uh, I figured and I started my company with. Uh, so I was working as a side hustle uh, doing PPC for for companies. And then one of my clients said that they want sales development in India. They were like, you know, having a hard time uh, getting the results they wanted. So I started my company uh, based on this need. And my sister and my brother, uh, they left their jobs and they started doing this full time and we started the company with three people. Uh, and now 
we are like almost uh, providing um, uh, outsourcing to basically any niche. So we have a question from uh, Anand Chauhan mm -hmm. that's not coming up in the chat. Uh, what are the opportunities for Israeli companies in the Indian market while we're on it? Like, so is it basically it's mostly outsourcing IT, some marketing, some services? Uh, you said look, maybe um, sales enablement and things like that. Would you say those are that's probably the bulk of it? How much? What about IT and um, engineering? Do you think a lot of the engineering and R and D that's necessary um, that there's a lack of in Israel? Do you see that happening in India too? So, firstly, uh, it's not just about like you know outsourcing uh, Israeli products. The way I see it, India is a huge country with 1.3 billion plus people, right? Now there are a lot of huge enterprises out there in in India. They don't have to reinvent the wheel uh, with the technology, uh, which Israel is already master at, right? What I see an opportunity in terms of Israeli companies can go to India and promote their technology so that Indian can focus on consumer products rather than like, you know, enterprise products because of the population there. And that's how I see this business partnership uh, with Israeli tech uh, promoted in India. Got it. And uh, what message would you say would you get try to get through to the world about India and then I'll ask that same question about Israel. So like a lot of people, um, and I'll, I'll put on my American hat here. We think of India as far out there, a place to outsource. Um, and, uh, you know, the, you know, and maybe just a couple of prominent Indian Americans. Um, and the we hear think of customer service with an Indian accent. That's probably more or less, that's mostly how uh, Americans think of as Indians. Um, but what do you what would you say to the world? What do you think you can wish you can get through that they can really see to get to understand authentic India that they're not seeing because uh, the TV and the media and all that is uh, it's a bullshit filter. Uh, sure. So first, I'll go with uh, what I see throughout the world, like you know about is about Israel and like you know, you know when I was uh, in India, uh, Israel. Uh, like you know, my fa I wanted I wanted to come to to Israel, and honestly, my friends and families and relatives were against my decision to move and settle here because of how media portrays Israel. And um, Indian media, or were they consuming international media? Which media? Uh, international media. Mm -hmm. But what I have to say is, Israel is not what like you know uh, you see on news or media or international media. It's not a war zone that, like, you know, uh, everyone feels like on forward our Netflix uh, series. It's full of life. You know? It's full of fun. It's full of diversity from people around the globe. Majority of uh, the population here is uh, immigrant. So it's, it's diverse. Uh, Israel is full of innovative mindset. You know, the startup mindset requires to solve the problem. Uh, and it's number one thing I love about Israel is it's amazing people. As I mentioned earlier, when I moved here, amazing people of Israel helped me to become the what to become the person I am today. So uh, the people of Israel, like you know, truly truly believe in like making the world a better place. It's not a statement. I'm saying it lightly. I really mean it, and that's what I've experienced it. Uh, yeah. I and, think a big problem is people have the filter of the media and they accept that filter as reality, no matter what it is. I mean, I can't tell you how many Israelis will say, oh, you're from America. And then they'll like quote movies and they'll think like whatever they saw in the movie is America. And I was just like, no, honey, that's a Hollywood studio. <laughs> exactly, exactly. If, if you are going to compare it to a Hollywood studio, it'd probably be the one with Alec Baldwin in it, you know, <laughs> it being a tra tragedy. Uh, sorry for the, Dry joke. Um, what do you think people would uh, should know about uh, Israel? Uh, like that you think that, that they don't know, like people throughout the world, if you were to kind of say the same question I asked you kind of about a so, uh, sorry, I about Israel, but India, same question I asked you about Israel. So the, the number one thing, uh, maybe I'm not sure, like, you know, world sees it or not. Uh, what what number one thing that you can expect from an Indian uh, is integrity, honesty. Uh, is something that you know it's in the culture uh, and uh, doesn't matter if it's related to work or relationship 
Uh, and the the best part is everyone is peace lover. It's not something they try to get out of the conflicts. You know, they try to avoid conflict. The as we are doing in in different ways, like you know, Israel and India have this this number one similarity. Uh, and the education system is improving significantly. There is something to uh, to let the world know that you know the talent we have in india right now is uh, is not what they experienced 20 years ago um, if you see one of the like top leaders from twitter from google from microsoft uh, all are from india uh, or indian origin they they started in india they moved to states and now they are like you know leading such a big organization so the talent uh, wise uh, its quality uh, as previously it was portrayed as like you know uh, never mind uh, but i would say it's uh, it's not something that it was uh, 10 years ago uh, india is changing changing really fast uh, thanks to like you know prime minister narendra modi uh, india has become more digital uh, than uh, any other developing countries out there. That's awesome. He's very popular, right? Yeah, he's like really. Yeah, right. That's awesome. He's, he seems like a great guy. Uh, Pratik, thank you. Is there anything else, any other questions or comments, anything else that you think that you want to share that, that we should know about either Israel or India that, that you feel that you have a better grasp on than people don't? No, all right. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, is, is there anything else that you want to share with us, with uh, with the audience, and before we wrap up? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so one thing I would like to end because uh, when I share stories about Israel, uh, there's one thing like you know I want to end the session with. Uh, I don't believe that Israel is just a country with startups or innovation or technology. Israel is awesome because of one thing. It's people. And that's what make Israel like, you know, amazing place in the world. And that's why it's like heart of the world. That, that's beautiful. And I have never been to India, but I have uh, met many, many Indians, particularly in America. And I've only had uh, hundreds. Many of them were my teachers in university, too. And I've only had the most positive experience. And the people make the culture and they make the con and they make the country and they make the nation. And so it's mutual. And I look forward to you uh, showing me around in India uh, in the future. Can't wait for that tour to be to be scheduled. I will be joining. Uh, Pratik, what do you think was your favorite part of this conversation? uh discussing about uh, similarities uh, that india as well shares awesome we'll do a follow-up with the differences it'll probably be funnier uh Pratik, where can people follow you if they're not already for those living under iraq uh so feel free to reach me out on twitter or linkedin uh, linkedin is the best place i would say um and likewise who are following me uh, follow you uh, for his amazing work in marketing and israel so uh, thank you everyone for listening. And if you have any questions, feel free to message me on LinkedIn and I'll be happy to answer you personally. Awesome. Pratik, um, Israel's ambassador to India, tech ambassador, but I would say probably you're probably almost the official ambassador. Let's give it 10 more years and some lobbying. We can get you there. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Yoel Israel and uh, you can follow us on LinkedIn or Twitter. We're easy to find. Thank you, Pratik. Shalom. Namaste. Namaste.